Good afternoon. I now call to order the October 18th, 2021 meeting of the Policy Review Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. Today's Policy Review Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through Microsoft Teams Live on, on the BCPS website. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Clark or Ms. Howie if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Clark, if you would please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Causey? Mr. Offerman? Present. Ms. Scott? Present. Mr. Thomas? Here. You have a quorum, ma'am. Thank you. Are there any visiting board members who are on who um, need to be recognized? No? Okay. And do we need to take a roll call of staff on the, on the call? We do not. We do not. Okay, great. Well, then we can go ahead and begin. So the, with the quorum being present, we will begin our meeting. Uh, the first item is item 2A, unfinished business, policy 8221, board officers, chair and vice chair duties. And for that, we'll be presenting Ms. Howie. Thank you, members of the committee. You have, uh, again, for your consideration, policy 8221, having to do with chair and vice chair duties. This was presented to PRC in February, initially in February 2021. But as of your last meeting, you wanted some changes. Uh, I would note for you that uh, policy 8221, uh, line 18 on page 2, uh, paragraph 2A, has been changed per the committee's request to include contract specific language. Um, the committee also requested that board council review that language that has been done. We've also added new paragraphs 2B and 2C and they were approved at the September 20th meeting. We deleted paragraph 2B at the direction of the committee at your last meeting. Excuse me. We've included in related policies a reference to 3215, which has to do with contract um, approval and execution, and also at, as a related document, the board handbook. And with that, I'm available to answer questions about the changes to 8221. Thank you for that. So as I'm looking, I'll, I'll just start off, then I'll, um, I'm sure others have questions. Uh, so the changes were, I'm looking on page two of the PRC draft, and it says on September 20th, 2021, PRC meeting on a motion of the committee, um, basically um, the following language, which is displayed in B and C, was inserted. Is that a correct? That is that correct. And for ease of reference for the committee and for anyone who is reviewing the policies, all of the language presented at this meeting is highlighted in yellow. Okay, great. All right, thank you for that. Um, were there any questions from um, anyone else? Um, Ms. Scott? Yes, uh, yeah, it, um, if, if anyone has any questions, just put your um, question because I don't see you, Mr. Thomas. So just put it um, that you have a question in there. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. I just wanted to say that I feel I think the language authorized to approve contracts and uh, other documents uh, kind of airs up any concerns that we had at the last PRC meeting with the execute documents portion. So uh, I think this looks really good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Thomas. Mr. Offerman, did you have a question? No. Okay. Sorry. I thought I saw something in there. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Perfect. All right. Um, so if there's no more questions then, um, uh, or any discussion, then um, if there are no corrections, then policy 
8221 is moved forward for first reading as presented. Um, at, um, do we need to take a, a vote? Can do unanimous consent. Okay. Would that be correct? We have a unanimous consent for it to move forward to first reading as presented. Any objections? Hearing none. Okay. Okay, so that's different. Doing it as unanimous as opposed to a roll call vote. We are um, appropriate in doing that, Ms. Um, Howie. It's perfectly acceptable under Roberts, and you would still be able to indicate in the transparency uh, review, this transparency description, that all members voted uh, in favor of the changes to the policy. Okay. All right. So then um, it moves forward, and um, policy 8021 will be moved forward for first reading. Okay. Uh, next policy to review is policy 8311 meetings, and for that again we have Ms. Howie. Thank you, members of the committee. You have before you policy 8311 concerning meetings. This policy has been before the committee previously uh, and has also been discussed by the board. As indicated for policy 8314, we have also for this policy presented new language in yellow and addressed some of the questions that were asked by both the committee and the board. Specifically, paragraph 1B on page 1, we've included a definition of electronic means. Paragraph 2B on page 2 has been amended because there were board member comments about the process for having a special meeting and calling a special meeting. There's also in this policy an appendix concerning electronic meetings. As you will remember from about a year ago, uh, the Roberts Rules authorship team published ahead of the publication of the 12th edition of Roberts Rules of Order, uh, rules for electronic meetings, which were timely given COVID. Uh, those have been adapted based on the board's discussion and the board's requests. So uh, specifically on page six, paragraph three, in the appendix, we've included rules governing board member requests to attend meetings electronically. You also have in the analysis uh, all of the dates that the policy was presented to PRC, as well as the dates and the requests from the board meeting. You'll see that in page two, as well on page three. Uh, we have also started based on board member requests, uh, specifically citing language from other Board of Education policies that are relevant, not only citing the policies, but citing the language as well that we think would be helpful uh, to the board in making its decision. So members of the committee, I'm available to answer questions. Thank you for that, Ms. Howie. All right, are there any questions from board members? Um, I can start off actually. It looks like, so once again, the changes were made are in yellow. That is correct. Okay, so that's what I was reviewing. And, um, and then the changes that are capitalized, um, that are in all caps are the changes that we made at the last PRC meeting? Not necessarily at the last PRC meeting, but that would be any new language. Uh, the standard is that anything that's being deleted is bracketed and anything that is new language or a new proposal is placed in all caps. Okay, all right. Uh, yep, we have a question looks like from Ms. Causey and then Mr. Thomas. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for that explanation and uh, I'm gonna let Mr. Thomas go first. Thank you. Not sure if he's ready. <laughs> I can go. Thank you, Ms. Scott, and thank you, Ms. Causey. Um, so, Ms. Howie, uh, would it be appropriate for us to set uh, maybe limits for the electronic participation in in-person meetings uh, on, say, page three, paragraph four, as a new letter? 
So let me make sure I understand your request. You're asking that, and page three doesn't have a paragraph four. Oh, sorry. That's, Unless oh, I'm looking at. That's six, sorry. Okay, that's all right. So I don't know if you've been able to look at other um, exemplars, but Prince George's, for example, permits um, limited uh, numbers of times during this during the year when individual members of the board can participate electronically or virtually, whatever uh, term you prefer. But it's, I mean, this is the committee's discussion. So if the committee yeah. wishes to limit, this is the time to discuss it and to discuss any possible changes. Could you repeat that, Mr. Thomas? What were you saying, limiting what? Uh, limiting the amount of uh, times an individual can participate in the board meeting virtually. So uh, currently- I thought it said, sorry. It's two. It's twice per year currently. Oh, does it say that? Oh, mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah, I was looking for it. Line 34. 30, off page three? On page six. Page six. Mm -hmm. Each board member is limited to electronically attending no more than two board meetings per year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is that a number that the committee wished to have changed? That's what I'd like to um, yes. find out from everyone. Um, uh, on the committee, um, um, yes. I guess we could get consensus. What what does the committee feel? Do we feel that should be increased or decreased? Or um, um, I guess I can go around. Um, um, Mr. Thomas, since you're here, do you feel that's? Uh, I'll just go around. Do you feel that that's the appropriate amount of times, or you think it should be increased? And if so, to what? Um, I I believe it should be uh, increased to four. Four. Okay. Um, let me just go around. Mr. Offerman. Uh, uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, I would say three would be good, but I, but I, I will certainly accept four. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Ms. Causey. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I guess my concern is if we pick a number, does that include meetings where board members um, may need to uh, participate electronically uh, because of COVID quarantine. So for instance, a board member might be healthy, ready, willing, and able to come, but because of um, following appropriate protocols, it it's not um, best for them to come in person. So I just would like a conversation about how that would be handled because that isn't necessarily anything that's up to a, to the board member. So is it a question of, inter you're asking whether or not it would be interpreted to cover uh, quarantines, self-quarantines? Would it apply? Yeah, if you were self-quarantining because you had COVID. As written there does not, as I read it, this would include a quarantine. Okay, um, is there something though, um, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, uh, uh, based on what Ms. Causey is saying though, where, we did have something where it was if you were sick with COVID or quarantining um, that would address that. I thought there was something separate that spoke specifically to that. Not in the appendix, no ma'am. No? Okay. So as I read the policy itself. Ms. Causey, didn't we have a conversation about that, though? I thought that there was something else. Uh, there was a resolution or a draft or something that specifically addressed it. I'm, I'm not sure that there was something that addressed it completely, just that it was a conversation um, with a couple board members um, having the same concern. Hmm. Okay. And I'm looking at page three of the uh, of the draft. Section six, which begins at line 10. Uh, and as I read these uh, conditions for electronic participation, I don't read that any of them would cover a self quarantine or a necessary quarantine. Um, an individual would still have to seek the permission of the of the chair. And it does not, I mean, there's, there's no indication that it would, if one has to be, um, quarantine, that that would be a specific exception to whatever number of times per year you choose. 
OK, can we add something in there then based on um, that? That should someone unfortunately be self quarantining or, or be exposed to COVID or have COVID, then um, I guess an exception would be made outside of the four. I, I, I don't think the four should apply if you're self quarantining with COVID. Um, what do others think? I, I agree with that, Ms. Scott, because I know some other board members were speaking to um, using their um, digital times if they're traveling for business, but they could set a time, set aside time to be um, in the business meeting or the committee meeting. So I think I, I agree with you that the COVID emergency quarantining uh, should not be part of the four. Yeah. So, uh, and I agree with Mr. Thomas about the four. <laughs> yeah, the four. Okay. <laughs> so it is dangerous for me to speak and think at the same time. Um, but um, off the top of my head, adding to subsection D, as in David, comma, with the exception of board members who are required to self quarantine. So, Do language to that effect. Yes. Yeah self quarantine due to exposure or um, however you would phrase it uh, to COVID-19? Well, I think COVID would certainly be, um, given where we are in the pandemic, would certainly be a requirement. And I'm not trying to um, predict um, a COVID-20, but certainly if there are other um, reasons for self quarantine, uh, would the, the the committee like to limit the board's action simply to COVID-19 or other reasons for self-quarantine? Hmm. And that, again, that's for the committee's discussion. Yeah. yeah. I would say just COVID. What do others think? This is Mr. Ackman. Uh, I would think COVID also. And you have a comment, Mr. Thomas? Uh, yes, I, I was just going to say that when I propose number four, in my mind, I was including the um, the quarantine days in, in that in those four days because uh, the, I would think the purpose of this policy is to encourage board members to come in person, and um, that that was what I was going to speak to. But uh, moving forward, I, I understand what everyone is saying about uh, having an exception for COVID nineteen, and I think it should say COVID nineteen uh, for the quarantine thing in the in the policy. So who are required to self quarantine because of exposure to COVID-19? Mm -hmm. OK. Um, oh. Is that Mr. Thomas? Yes, sorry, I was going to type in the chat. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, so on page three, uh, section six, a paragraph B, I believe it is. Um, it says that in order to participate by electronic means in any in-person board or board committee meeting, a board member must seek the permission of the board chair. And uh, I'm wondering if maybe if we should move that to say uh, a board member must notify the board chair within 24 hours or 24 hours prior. Uh, but I mean, I think I'm fine with it, it the way that it says it's it's written right now. I just wanted to open a conversation about that. Mm -hmm. OK. And it looks like there's a comment from Ms. Covey. I mean, excuse me, Ms. Causey. Thank you, Madam Chair. That was um, to the prior issue of the number of days. Um, mm -hmm. To Mr. Thomas's point, I um, am looking for it, but I believe there was already a time frame in here. Um, no, we did not include a time frame. Is that something that the committee wishes to see? The time frame and um, how would it um, be presented? Like, what would it say? As <laughs> so, if I'm understanding uh, the request uh, correctly, please feel free to correct me that um, board members would be required to notify 
the board chair or to seek the permission of the board chair within a fixed amount of time. So you couldn't just say, hey, I'm coming virtually today with the understanding, obviously, that there has to be um, technology that's set up. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. that's I believe what I heard. I thought there was something in here that said um, that you notify the board chair 48 hours in advance or something. Yeah. I don't see that. Uh, on page six, I'm sorry, Mr. Thomas. Yeah. On page six. Three A's in advance. Three A. I think that's what you're looking at, Miss Scott. Page six, three A. Let me go there. That would be. Thank you, uh, Miss Clark. That's at line 17. Oh, thank you, Miss Clark. I thought I thought I did see that in there. I'm sorry, and that's on um, uh, page, page six. which page again? Oh, page, page six. six. Three right. A. Okay, that is, yeah. Three business days in advance, no later than. So mm -hmm. does that have the effect of what Mr. Thomas was um, talking about, or is it something different? Because that's how I understood it. So as I understand it, individual board members again because of technical uh, requirements would have to uh, provide at least 72 hours notice of their request to for permission to attend a meeting virtually okay does that satisfy what you were um, um speaking of mr thomas uh, yes thank you okay Thank you. Yeah, because that's what I thought. Basically, you have to give notice. This, this is Mr. Offerman. In the case we just talked about, if someone, and I'm, perhaps I'm wrong about this, if someone gets a, a COVID diagnosis or has to quarantine because of COVID, but doesn't know until 30 hours before the meeting or whatever time, does that, does that, does that, uh, I guess what I'm asking is that would be too short a time, correct? It, not under under this uh, particular section, yes, sir. Okay, so what There's I'm thinking is, is is perhaps we need to make that l less hours. I, I I do understand that there's a need to set up or or the intention need to set up uh, uh, some type of uh, you know. Uh, way for that person to to actually uh you know to to actually to actually do it online or you know uh, uh in in other ways but uh i'm wondering if someone might get caught in a situation where they you know where 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 they're as 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 miss uh as as miss causey said if someone has co you know i mean there's mm -hmm. no guarantee that anybody's going to get a diagnosis or have knowledge of it within that time frame so i'm wondering if we should change that to uh, like uh to 24 hours, assuming that staff can uh, can uh, can actually handle that. Or could we put it there, like, except in the case of COVID, something like that? So one one recommendation uh, would be to have a number one under the A. This requirement does not apply in cases of exposure to COVID-19 without okay. including a specific time period. I can also follow up uh, with Ms. Gover to find out how much time she does need uh, to make the necessary technical arrangements. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Causey? Thank you. I appreciate the discussion. Um, I also, and if this is not the right time, um, that's fine. I did just want to um, put into the conversation what was brought up in the board meeting about um, public participation virtually um, and if there is technology that is going to be set up on a regular basis for um, public participation virtually, um, maybe that would um, negate any problems with setting up technology at the last minute. And I, and I know that this was going to be discussed, I believe, Madam Chair, you said in the Equity Committee, um, 
But just yeah, while we're that's discussing this here, I just wanted to know if that had any impact. So maybe Miss Howie or Miss Clark. So I'm looking at the um, the policy specifically page two meetings held by electronic means and if it's the board's desire the section either section five um or section six would have to be changed sections five section five, section five or six on which page uh, i'm sorry page two But I'm not familiar enough, Mrs. Causey, with the technology that has to be um, used to be able to say with any certainty um, what's necessary for public participation because there is a difference. As I recall, it's not by teams, mm -hmm. but it's uh, through the phone. But I, I do not want to misspeak. I, I think, yeah, and I think it's just a matter of the technology but as i had said i think that that was something that i was wanting us to flesh out more and then bring um, a recommendation to the board to implement um sooner rather than later so let's see well we could just put that in a parking lot for future conversation yeah Oh, I see. Uh, Ms. Clark said participation by the public is 80 through 15. Yeah. So, but what we were um, discussing was like um, when, because we went to Mabe and we heard about you know being more robust and 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 being able to have more participation through electronic means. But I think that's like Ms. Cosby saying we'll put that in a parking lot. But we'll um, I think there's ways that we'll have to flesh that out more, address it, and then and then um, bring it back and then um, bring it to the full board if that's okay with everyone. <laughs> Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, so the IT people can chime in at, mm -hmm. at a particular point. Yeah, maybe we have, have them give us a presentation or something. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so, um, were there any other questions uh, in in regards to meetings being held? I think the COVID um, nineteen edition is important. The four days mm -hmm. separate from COVID, I think, is is important um, and a good and a good um, add. And um, also, as Mr. Offerman pointed out, um, uh, in a worst case scenario, short notice, if someone did unfortunately have exposure, um, uh, putting that in, in Ms. Howie, as you said, as um, uh, one under A. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Did anyone else have any other suggestions? So just so the committee's clear, uh, my understanding is that uh, there are three suggested amendments and one would be to add uh, to uh, subsection 3A, a new section one that mm -hmm. reads, uh, this requirement does not apply in cases of exposure to COVID-19. And that is the section governing board member request to participate electronically. The other, the second change is to subsection D as in David. Uh, and in that uh, subsection as written, ex you would, you want uh, two to be changed to four and then added to the end of that sentence with the exception of board members who are required to self quarantine because of exposure to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Ms. Clausey, you had an additional question. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to ask, so the change that's going to be on page six, each board member is limited to electronically attending no more than four board meetings per year. Um, does that include committee meetings or is that separate from committee meetings? So the appendix indicates that committee meetings will be held electronically until mm -hmm. further notice. So okay. committee meetings wouldn't be included in this um, this section. OK, great. Thank you for that clarification. 
Yeah, no, thank you. Because I was I was assuming it didn't include committee. So that's an important clarification. Thing. Great. OK, um, any other questions or discussion? OK, um, so Miss, um, let's see. Miss Howie, do we need to take a roll call vote on these changes? I would, given that they are amendments to the uh, policy, I think that is wise. OK. So do I have to name the amendments or just say all in favor of the amendments discussed? Um, we could just so, take a roll call vote. Mm -hmm. So to make my parliamentary heart happy <laughs> okay. and to make sure that um, the committee members uh, want each of the amendments, I believe that while we're, even though we're in a small assembly, it makes sense to simply go through each of these amendments and to to vote on the policy then as amended. OK, then um, if in that case, is there a way? I don't know, if, um, Ms. Clark, if we could put that in the chat because I want to make sure I state them properly. Because I believe there was about three or four, so I, I guess we could go through. Um, and so it would be an, um, stating sure. each one and voting on yes. each one. Okay. So if you just give me a moment. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I thought that was good discussion and um, everybody brought up some really very good points. That would be the First Amendment, ma'am. OK. So I'll state this all in favor of uh, to add um, to paragraph three, section A, a new number one. This requirement does not apply in cases of exposure to COVID-19. Do I have a motion to accept that? So I moved Offerman. Is there a second? Second, Thomas. Thank you. Um, Ms. Um, who's on here? Ms. Clark, may we do a roll call vote, please? Sure. Um, Ms. Causey? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Four in favor. Thank you. The motion carries. Second, do I have a motion to strike two and insert four in line 35. So move, Thomas. Second Offerman. Thank you. Ms. Clark, may we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, Ms. Causey. Yes. Mr. Offerman. Yes. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. Four in favor. Yep. Now we will have third. It now. You are board members. OK. Thank you. Do I have a motion to add to the end of the sentence at 3.d.i the words with the exception of board members who are required to self quarantine because of exposure to COVID-19? So moved, Averman. Is there a second? Second, Ms. Causey. Ms. Clark may have a roll call vote, please. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Causey? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Four in favor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I believe that was the last of the three. 
Correct. And now the vote would be on the policy as amended. Okay, let's see. Okay, so we're still on 83. Sorry, I was reading. Okay, uh, do I have a motion to accept the policy as amended? So moved. Opperman. Second, Thomas. Okay, I guess, is there any discussion? Looks like there's a question from Ms. Causey. Thank you, I just had one last question. Typically with policies, um, because so many of them deal with the administration of uh, the school system, um, say something along the lines of the board directs the superintendent to implement this policy. And there's no such phrase here. Um, is it something where we would uh, want to start including language where appropriate, um, uh, the, you know, implementing this policy will be included in the standard operating procedures of the board or something along those lines in terms of who uh, is administering it and, and where uh, people can go for the details. So Ms. Causey, for your 8,000 series, the standard is not the superintendent will implement, but the board will implement. And I'll direct you to page four, line nine. The board will implement this policy. Okay, are there any other questions or any other discussions? Thank you. I was looking at the last page of the addendum. <laughs> Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And members of the board, um, just so you know, uh, the policy on public participation is now scheduled for February 14th, 2022. Um, there is currently an appeal before circuit court about uh, the legality of that policy. Um, so we're hoping that the circuit court appeal uh, will be completed by that time. Mm. Thank you for that update. OK, so again, we had a motion um, to um, uh, accept the policy as amended and um, it was moved and seconded. So Ms. Clark, if we could take a roll call vote, please. Yes, Ms. Causey. Yes. Mr. Offerman. Yes. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. Four in favor. Thank you. OK, so the motion carries and um, will be uh, I guess it goes it will be moved forward for first reading as edited. Yes, ma'am. Great. Thank you. Thank you, committee members. You now have uh, policy 8314, which is about the agenda setting of the meeting. You'll notice members of the committee we've added to the policy analysis um, specific references to the relevant public works recommendations when there are uh, mm -hmm. public works recommendations. Uh, so there, uh, there are recommendations, actually it's recommendation 1-13 uh, concerning agenda settings and uh, according to public works recommendation, the agenda for board meetings should be set at a fixed time in advance. Uh, a completed agenda should be sent or delivered to each member of the media. And should an emergency arise, a developed specific procedure should be employed to ensure that the emergency nature and the method for notifying each member of the media of the issue. So uh, we have provided to you suggested changes. As you see, there is quite a lot of history um, related to this particular policy. We do believe that the current recommendations, which were approved at the committee's June 14th meeting, um, are still appropriate and do still respond to those issues that were addressed um, and brought to light by um, Public Works. So I'm available to answer questions if the committee members have any questions. Thank you for this. I'm glad that you um, or, or that it was put in there. Um, the findings mm -hmm. as it related because they had, you're right, um, several suggestions. 
And um, basically, were you all able to implement the majority of the suggestions from Public Works? And is that what I'm seeing below where it says current changes proposed? Um, so the current changes proposed, we believe already addressed what Public Works was concerned about about the dissemination of the agenda mm -hmm. and the way in which uh, the agenda is approved by the board. So, so we've made no changes for this particular meeting. We believe that the changes that were recommended previously do address the concerns expressed by Public Works. Okay, because I'm looking at on um, page one, uh, like 27 and 28, where it says should be prepared at a fixed time. You're right, in advance. That's something already done. Um, only emergency items brought to the agenda after the deadline. I don't see that anywhere in the policy. So if I would direct your attention to page three, line seven, when an emergency exists, a board member may present a motion to amend the agenda during the regular meeting. Uh, and then as well, there is um, on page two at line 38 uh, that where possible and in order to ensure the smooth running of the meeting and compliance with the Open Meetings Act, a board member intending to make a motion to amend the agenda shall forward the proposed motion in writing to the board's executive assistant 24 hours in advance of the meeting so that the public may be made aware of the possible amendment. Okay. Okay. Um, but there's no prohibitive language in there um, that would prohibit somebody from adding a last minute agenda item. Or presenting it. And I don't know that the board would want to do that. Okay. Got it. I see now. All right. And then um, where she also uh, public works had in there as far as adding um, notifying the media. So that's something that we already do through our website, putting out a press release or media advisory. Correct. OK, all right. Thank you. Um, did anyone else have any questions in, in regards to this? Yes, Mr. Thomas. Uh, thank you. So on page one, section two paragraph, B, uh, it says agenda items for regular board meetings of for regular meetings of the board shall include but not be limited to the following headings. And when it says um shall include but not be limited to, uh, I guess for clarity's sakes, um, is that saying that it, it will include these things and possibly additional things? Yes. Or is, okay, so not all of our meetings will include a superintendent's report or a chair's report or a student board members report. Correct. This is referring to only regular meetings, not work mm -hmm. sessions, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Never mind. Yes, Ms. Causey. Thank you. So on page one, mm -hmm. line 18, the words are deleted. Um, officers for approval of the board officers mm -hmm. and I looked through and I did not see it but is there uh, clarification elsewhere that the board officers approve the superintendent's draft agenda so um, subsection d board members may submit to the superintendent or board chair proposed agenda item Yes, but that doesn't speak to approval. Mm -hmm. And there's been questions in the past as to um, how that's done. So I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not following Ms. Causey. Um, you're so, saying what? How do you approve the agenda? I think. If, and Ms. Causey, please correct me if I'm wrong. I think you're asking whether or not uh, if board members submit it, it's automatically approved. Is that what you're asking? No, no. Um, okay. I wouldn't. 
expect that everything recommended would be included at the immediately upcoming board meeting because uh, timing for staff to prepare is necessary and also balancing the agendas so that um, meetings don't go too long um, or that more urgent matters are, are covered first. But it, it removes that the board officers approve the agenda. So I, I would think that that would need to be put back in to clarify. So it's not just that the draft agenda is, is accepted. It's the draft agenda is discussed. Um, it's the current practice, which is the superintendent and the chair of the board and the vice chair of the board and appropriate staff review the draft agenda and then make any changes. Um, and then it's approved by the board officers. And I'm looking for my notes. As I recall, this was recommended for deletion, but I cannot find that in my notes. I apologize. Was so, that something that was recommended from the efficiency review? No, ma'am. Okay. We have made no changes to the policy based on the efficiency review. Again, if it is the committee's desire that that language be um, be included. How would it read though? That's what I'm trying to understand. Or I, I see where Ms. Cause is talking about, or it says officers for a wait, officers for approval of the board officers. I agree, Ms. Scott, that that could be um, wordsmithed, and I would I would uh, appreciate recommendations by Ms. Howie or um, Mr. Thomas. I, so, um, comma, and approved by the board officers. So, submitted by board members, comma, and approved by board officers? Like that? I mean, that makes more sense, because right now, the way I'm reading it, I'm, it's um, not uh, making sense. I'm sorry, Mr. Thomas, you had a, a comment, question? Mr. Thomas? Thank you. I, I was just going to say something along the lines of uh, it, we could just end the sentence, uh, which may include agenda items recommended by board members, period. Uh, board officers will approve, will, you know, approve the superintendent's agenda or board at board members. Board officers are required to approve the draft agenda. Could be like an, a separate sentence in that same paragraph. Oh, I see what you're saying, Mr. Thomas. I'm I'm going to um, type something in the chat and then if I can make a motion, I think that I think your suggestion would be very clear. Because I, yeah, because I, I think I think it's not quite clear <laughs> right now. Um, but um, I think it's it, it does. It's important, though, to show based on the efficiency review where we are doing the things that were recommended. Um, the thing though about the 24 hours, where it says board members intending to make a motion to amend the agenda shall forward the proposed motion in writing to the board's executive assistant 24 hours in advance of the meeting so that, the, okay. So that was put on there, I guess, before the efficiency review. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was. Great. All right. Um, oh, and Ms. Calzi, you're typing in a sentence to add, mm -hmm. I believe, or you're doing some wordsmithing? Yes. Okay. Um, were there any other questions or anything? Because I, as um, I didn't have any, because I thought it was. Um, Pretty well written. Okay. So, Madam Chair, if I may. Yeah. I move to amend policy 
14, adding to page one, line 18. The board officers will approve the final agenda after discussion of the draft agenda with the superintendent. Okay, I see where you put that in there, okay. Okay, um, so Ms. Causey um, has made a motion um, and is there a second to Ms. Causey's motion? Second, Thomas. Thomas, okay. So the motion has been moved by Ms. Causey, seconded by Christian Thomas, and it's basically to amend policy 8314, adding to line 18, the board officers will approve the final agenda after discussion of the draft agenda with the superintendent. So my question would be though, is that when there's discussion of the draft agenda, it, it's, it is approved then. So I don't understand this um, sentence because it seems redundant. It seems that that's what we already do. How does that change anything that we currently do now? Um, thank you, Madam Chair, for that question. I agree with you. It's just clarifying the current practice. So that the, the board officers wouldn't just unilaterally approve an agenda without first discussing the draft agenda with the superintendent as it's currently done now. OK. So OK, so then you're you're wanting to add it to clarify the language um, and what because that's currently what happens now with the agenda setting. So yes, yes, ma'am. OK. Any um, other questions or comments or anything from anyone? OK, and um, Ms. Howie, I would just ask, is this already written somewhere what Ms. Causey said because that's what we already do. So is it already written in another policy about a, a or? I do not believe it is um, in, reflected in another policy. Okay. As far as the approval. I think there's reference to the approval, uh, but not a specific, not an explicit indication that that's part of the process. Got it. Okay, great. All right, um, Ms. Clark, uh, well, if there's no more questions, uh, Ms. Clark, could we take a, a roll call vote, please, on um, Ms. Causey's uh, amendment? Yes, Ms. Causey. Yes. Mr. Offerman. Yes. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. Four in favor. OK. All right. Um, was there any other discussion or any other questions or anything about um, uh, policy 8314? OK, so then I guess we could now um, take a vote on the um, policy uh, 8314 as amended. Do I have a, a motion to um, move? Uh, sorry. Yep, do I have a motion to uh, move the um, to move the amended policy 83 to approve the amended policy 8314? So moved, Thomas. Thank you. Second. <laughs> Second, Thomas. Great. May we have a roll call vote, please? I'm sorry. Yes, Miss Causey. Yes. Mr. Offerman. Yes. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Miss Scott. Yes. Four in favor. Great. OK, so policy 8314. Um, we'll go forward for first reading uh, as edited. Thank you, committee members. And the final policy uh, before you today is AT601. Would be a, it is a new policy on board use of social media. We have included as well in the policy analysis uh, reference to the Public Works LLC recommendations. There's a finding on page 59 uh, about uh, social media account, uh, specifically it says bashing teachers 
Uh, then uh, a finding as well, page 63, about a lack of important policies in the uh, board member handbook, which leads me to recommendation 1-8. The BCPS board should make updating its operating manual a high priority. Um, I would note, um, and the board is well aware of this, that on September 28th, the board did adopt uh, a revised handbook which incorporates language about social media. At the last uh, meeting, this policy was returned to PRC at September meeting, excuse me, of the board uh, to discuss further language from Governor Hogan's own social media policy. The social media policy of the governor himself is included or itself is included uh, as attachment four to the policy analysis. Uh, and based on the board's request, those uh, some of those items have been incorporated and you will see that um, in new paragraph three. There were some that simply did not translate well. Uh, but the ones that could be used by the board were included in the policy. Previous amendments that were in the August 10th, 2021 draft were approved by the committee, uh, specifically um, including information about the First Amendment and the board members acting individually. So with that, I am ready to answer any questions the board may have. Thank you, Ms. Holly. And again, um, the changes you said are in yellow. Yes, ma'am. All okay. the new language for, for consideration at this meeting, so language you haven't seen previously, is highlighted in yellow. Okay, and that so, language came from um, uh, suggestions from, I believe you said the governor's um, social correct. media policy? Okay. That is correct. And that's what's in yellow. OK, that's good um, to know that's and then also again and, and sorry if I'm restating the obvious. I find that restating things helps reinforce it, um, but the information based on the efficiency review, the findings, those two findings as far as the board handbook and board conduct um, were any of those um, incorporated in this or were we already addressing some of those as well? The board had already updated its handbook, so there was no need to address that in this policy. Okay, and the other, the um, or conduct? Same difference. Yes. It was in your handbook. Got it. Okay, thank you. Any questions um, from um, the committee? Policy 8601. Oh, I have. Is that Mr. Thomas? Yes, thank you. I have something typed in the chat, so it was weird. I couldn't take it out to put comment in the chat. But yes, um, I just uh, I moved to insert the word um, Instagram after Twitter on page one, line twenty five. Mm, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and YouTube. OK, so Mr. Thomas moves to insert the word Instagram after um, on page um, one, line 25. Is there a second? Yes, Causey, second Causey. Great, OK. Thank you for that. Thank I'll repeat again. Mr. Thomas moves to insert Instagram after Twitter on page one, on line 25. And that was seconded by Ms. Causey. Um, any questions or discussion? Uh, Mr. Thomas? Yes, Mr. Thomas. Thank you. Um, although it says, and to any other platform possessing equivalent capabilities uh, in the same paragraph, I know that student members of the boards often use Instagram as one of the primary sources of social media, so I just wanted to include the language in the policy. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Clark, may we do a roll call vote, please? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Causey? Yes, I had, I'm sorry. 
Yes. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I had a comment because there's just uh, two typos. Oh. Sorry, could we do it after um, the vote? Because we're in the um, middle of the vote, so we could discuss it after we vote on this. Um, okay, but it's it's related to this, so I guess we could. Yeah, yes. but we're already in the middle of the yep. vote. Okay. Then I'll, I'll just say no for now. <laughs> okay. So um, please continue, Ms. That was a no vote, Ms. Causey. Correct. It's a no vote for now. Mr. Offerman. Yes. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. Three in favor. Thank you. So that um, carries, passes. All right. And so now we have a comment from Ms. Causey. Thank you. I'm sorry. I had put comment in the chat, but I didn't hit enter, so you you did not see it. Um, on page one, uh, the paragraphs are numbered one, two, and, and two. two. So yeah. the numbering needs to be corrected. Um, and then on page one, line 34, um, I believe that word should be discussion. Hmm. It's just missing a couple. My error. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I don't know that that needs a motion to correct typos, but I, I leave that up to Madam Chair. Ms. Powell, do we need a motion for that? Or sorry, go ahead. Uh, we're not changing any content. You can certainly direct staff to um, do a spell check and to um, ensure that all numbers. Uh, all the, the numbering is correct. OK, so you're saying we don't need a motion to do that. We would just direct staff to do spell check and just ensure that the Roman numerals are correct. Yes, ma'am. OK, great. So I just directed staff by just saying that, I hope. <laughs> and any motion to adopt is with the caveat that the corrections or the errors that were uh, brought to light by Ms. Causey will be corrected. Do I need to restate that? When you um, are stating the motion, you can indicate that uh, it's with the understanding, if this is moving forward, that all of the errors that were um, pointed out by Ms. Causey will be corrected. Okay. All right, any other? Discussion or questions or amendments? Madam Chair, may I change my vote to a yes? After we've already voted? I'm not sure if we can do that, Ms. Call. I mean, not Ms. Cousy, Ms. Howie. Is that done under um, Robert's rules of order? Once you voted, are you able to go back and change your vote? In a small assembly, it would be with leave of the um, assembly, but you haven't voted on the full um, policy yet. You only voted on the amendment, so it's up to the uh, assembly. Oh, then okay. never mind. Then never mind. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, are there any other changes or questions or amendments to the policy? Okay. All right, then. So, we will move forward. OK, so do I have a motion to move policy 8601 forward as amended with the understanding that the changes Ms. Causey stated will be corrected? So, so moved, Thomas. Thomas. Second, okay. Thomas. It was moved by Mr. Offerman, seconded by Mr. Thomas. Ms. Clark, may we do have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Causey? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. OK, and then now we have um, item three, new business, the Public Works Operational Efficiency Review Report and Policy Recommendations. And for that, we have Ms. Howie. Thank you, uh, members of the committee. Um, staff members have for you uh, this afternoon part one of our recommendations for moving forward with the recommendations made by the, uh, the Public Works LLC Efficiency Review. 
Uh, we will bring additional items to you uh, at the next meeting, given the number of items that we've identified. So today what we want to do, first of all, is note that there were commendations in PRC's, uh, in, I'm sorry, of PRC's work in uh, the public works recommendations. We do want to identify, however, within the recommendations, some errata, which will have some bearing upon how we respond and our recommendations as staff. Second, we want to discuss some of the recommendations as related to PRC's work and policy creation. Uh, we want to provide to you our recommendations, and then we'd like to get from the, uh, from the Policy Review Committee your recommendations. First, just a couple of errors that were in the report. Uh, this is a table from the Public Works report that indicates the policy organization. Policy organization is actually uh, starts in the, uh, the, the quadruple zero series. Uh, there are not uh, separate chapter 0, 0100, 0, 0200, 0, 0300. Again, that will become relevant later on. Second, Maryland law is misquoted. Uh, the report indicates that Maryland law uh, provides that policies are to be reviewed every seven years. I'm not aware of anything in the education article or in Comar 13A that makes that requirement. I'm not quite sure where uh, public works receive that requirement. And lastly, um, I've always liked to use the royal we, so now I do get to use the royal we. Uh, the general counsel and the policy staff liaison are the same person and in a couple of the recommendations, the policy staff liaison is supposed to request of the general counsel um, certain items. So I can ask myself, it will be a very, very short meeting. So with that, getting into the recommendations and the commendations. First, members of the committee, there is a commendation that was issued to the board for having established a policy review committee, for having a schedule for meetings, and for being guided by the specific rules found in Policy 8130. And those of you who have heard me speak before know that Policy 8130 is kind of a bureaucrat's dream. It's a policy on policies. Uh, as to recommendations, uh, recommendation 1.2 indicates that the board should develop a five-year review of policies um, and that uh, they should also be reviewed by the general counsel and supplemented with the annual review. Their specific cycle is as follows, that there be a five-year cycle and in year one, the quadruple zero series, as well as the 8,000 series and the 1,000 series. Year two would be the 2,000, 3,000, and 7,000 series. Year three, the 4,000, which is a personnel series. Year four is the students series, and year five would be the 6,000 instructional curriculum and instruction series. So uh, two responses of staff, first, in June of 2019, Policy Review Committee changed Policy 8130. We used to have a five-year review cycle and we moved to a seven-year process. So the board adopted this change in August of 2019. And as I indicated, there is nothing in Maryland law or regulation that indicates that there has to be a seven-year review of policies. Second, staff analyzed this recommendation and looked at exactly the, the numbers of policies that would be reviewed on the cycle recommended by Public Works. And as you see, you have a very heavy review schedule the first two years, and uh, the second and third year, a little bit uh, or half of uh, what is in the first and second year, and year five, what you have is less than half, um, almost a third, um, of uh, years one and two. As to, uh, again, related to the policy review cycle, in addition to chapter one, there also was a recommendation in chapter two um, 
not quite sure why I was in chapter two as opposed to chapter one, uh, but uh, indicated that our policy review guidelines have not been adhered to, uh, and some policies have uh, not been reviewed in six or more years. Well, that's true because you have a seven year review cycle. Um, what we identified, what we found in recommendation 237 was that there were 37 policies that were not reviewed since 2015, which is six years. We have a seven year review um, cycle. Uh, we also saw that um, that public works uh, did not correctly identify the number of policies in the policy review manual. There are 160 policies in the policy review manual. Uh, that is not the number identified by public works. As you see, their number was 142. We've also analyzed uh, by series how many policies have not been reviewed since 2015, since that was a finding in chapter two. And again, for those policies that have not yet been reviewed, they're scheduled to be reviewed subject to and required by policy 8130. And finally, um, what we provide for your uh, review is an analysis of the number of policies that have been reviewed each year since 2018. And as you see, we review about 40 policies each year uh, and some having been returned to PRC at the end of the year. So what does that mean as far as your discussion today? So what we present for your discussion today, members of the committee, uh, about these particular recommendations, and that would be recommendation 1-2 and 2-37, whether or not you want to reamend policy 8130 and return to the 2019 version. So going from seven years, we've been at five years, went to seven, we're now at seven years, do you want to go back to five? So, and that is question seven, do you want to keep the seven year period in 8130? And then what do you want to consider as far as the cyclical review of policies given uh, Public Works recommendation to view to review particular series each year with the understanding that those series are somewhat um, the numbers uh, do not track uh, and will have you'll have heavy years and you'll have extremely light years. So with that, I leave it to you for discussion. And before I go to the next series. Thank you. Um, I can just start off. Um, one, thank you for that and for breaking it down. Um, so basically right now what we're discussing or deciding is if we want to go from seven to five, which was their recommendation of how often we review um, our policies and um, no, oh, okay, thank you for making that <laughs> larger. And um, that's what we're looking at now, considering changes to the um, review of policies per Public Works Exhibit 1-17. What, um, what do other um, systems do? Is there any sort of precedence or um, any preference as to five or seven? So as I recall, Public Works um, provided some uh, what other school systems do and some do annual, some do every two years. Mm -hmm. uh, there is uh, there are variations out there. OK, and um, all right, that would be my question, I, I guess. And I don't recall and, and um, maybe you do. What was the board's or what was the reasoning? I was uh, yeah, what was the reasoning for changing it from five to seven? The reason was that you weren't able to do all of the policies um, at one time. OK, it was it had to do with the number of policies each time. And right. I'm sorry for the display being <laughs> being somewhat interesting. So that is my error. If you would just allow me a minute, please, members of the committee, and I will ask Mr. Corns what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> All right. Are you there, Mr. Corns? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Howie, just go ahead and run your uh, PowerPoint again. Mm -hmm. 
And then uh, under display settings at the top. And I, uh, yes. Just uh, choose the swap. Okay, for some, all right. Yes, ma'am, you're, you're ready now. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. Corns. Uh, did any other committee members, any board members have additional questions? Oh, Mr. Thomas. Thank you. Um, Ms. Howie, when yes. we're currently reviewing our cycle right now, uh, are we taking it section by section like was recommended uh, before? OK, you're not. Um, you're what you're taking now is based on whether or not it's been reviewed within the seven or the five year cycle or actually the seven year cycle. I see. And going forward is the plan to then just continue with that to continue. Well, if, unless we uh, amend this policy today. That's up to the committee. <laughs> that is that's your decision as to what your preference would be. OK, uh, so I kind of have a concern with the idea of going section by section like that, you know, because if we are, are going one section and we're spending an entire year on just focusing on employees, then when are we focusing on the student policy? And if we're focusing on the student policy for one year, then we're not reviewing it for, the, for another five years. It just seems like we need to be kind of you know, taking a, a mix of the approach to which kind of policies we're reviewing and not just taking it section by section. And also, uh, our board terms are on a, well, the SMOB term is only on a one year cycle. So I feel like SMOB would only be reviewing a set specific type of policy, which I don't feel like is actually allowing the SMOB to have an influence on all policy. And board members are only on a four year cycle. And so if they, they would, they would not be able to, a certain board would not be able to focus on an entire section of our board policy. So uh, it, it it doesn't seem like it, it, it's something that would be the, at the benefit for our, our board considering the 12 members that we have. Um, and if we aren't able to get through all, if we have, if, if, if the policy was previously revised so that we can actually review all of our policies in some <laughs> seven year period, then if we go back, are we going to be able to review them in a five year period? Uh, what has, has something changed since then that would allow us to review them all in a five year period? So um, again, the 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 board when the seven years was recommended, uh, my recollection was that the board's concerns were that uh, the the number of policies that were being reviewed for the five year cycle had just become you know, onerous. Uh, that seven years was uh, was what the board thought uh, the board could handle. So that's as to the, the seven years opposed to five. The other the other part of your question as to whether or not, you know, if you're only doing the the 5000 series once every five years, I, I do believe this was referenced in uh, the public works report that let's say there is a related policy and the related policies in another series, you would have the absolute ability to review that related policy. And then uh, if there's an annual review requirement or if there's a requirement because of changes in state and federal law, you don't have to you know, sit on it for five years and then say, well, now we're gonna do it. Uh, you would still be reviewing those policies that are required to be reviewed because of you know, statutory changes, regulatory changes um, in that period. Does that make sense, sir? Yes, okay, thank you, Ms. Howie. Sure. Okay, were there any other questions? Yes, Ms. Causey. Thank you. I appreciate the presentation and the conversation. Um, in reviewing the public works recommendations, the um, districts the, to which we have been, um, which were agreed to and to which we've been comparing ourselves um, throughout this uh, efficiency process, um, they seem to have a two year cycle for the majority of their um, review, which mm -hmm. has me questioning how many policies do they have? Um, and 
if there is in fact um, positives to reviewing them sooner. I do think the changes that we made um, to policy 8130 um, related to taking it from a three reader process to a two reader process, but by having those drafts available to the public sooner than previously, um, that that could increase our efficiency, but still meet the requirement of um, transparency to the public and also uh, the specific time that they have to comment. Um, so I'm just wondering if we should try and do a sooner number of years based on the comparison of the other districts and the public works recommendation. Again, that is what staff is presenting for your discussion. Uh, if the committee wants us to do a deeper analysis of the number of policies those other school systems slash districts may have, we're happy to do that when we return to you in November. I think that would be a good idea. I think that's that was a good question raised. So we can look at the number of policies in those other manuals. Is that the committee's pleasure? Would there be any objections to that? No. I, I think that would be helpful. And also um, just in terms of giving the committee and also the full board now that it's come up in this committee, uh, the opportunity to um, evaluate this more and then coming to the November meeting um, with a you know more clear vision perhaps. So in terms of clarity of vision, uh, that is what the PRC based on the recommendations, I think that's where PRC uh, would be providing that clarity to the board. Yeah. Okay. Uh, looks like this. Again, Sorry. if there's additional information that the committee needs in order to um, to make sure that that vision is clear to the board and articulate that to the board, then do not hesitate to let staff know. Okay. I'll talk to so myself question. about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Looks like Mr. Offerman has a question. I'm sorry, Mr. Offerman didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> no problem. Uh, actually, uh, it was already answered. Thank you. OK, a uh, comment from Mr. Thomas. I uh, thank you. Would it also be possible for Miss Howie and staff uh, to uh, maybe show us like what if we had, if we implemented that in PCPS a, a two year cycle, uh, what that would look like? Or like what kind of the schedule would look like? I mean, would that require us to have maybe two PRC meetings per month instead of one? Uh, if, if maybe we could see what that would require for us to do. Sure. OK, it Thank would you. be a lot more intense than the every um, seven year schedule. No question, but sure, we can tell you how many policies that would that would mean and then um, divide that by the number of committee meetings you have. Um, and also based on that, what Mr. Thomas just said, the recommendation from the, the um, public works was for a five year schedule. Correct. We're on seven. So um, where did two come from? Um, uh, two, I believe, was in one of the comparator school districts slash systems. I think they're called districts okay. in whatever um, state. But they weren't right. recommending for us to have two year. Their recommendation no. for us is five. <coughs> Correct. It's for okay. five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, Miss. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Miss Causey. Thank you. Um, I'm for two points of discussion. Um, one policy um, 8130 has a corresponding rule 8130, mm -hmm. which on page one, um, section F states that the superintendent rules will be reviewed in conjunction with board policies. Correct. And um, it has been discussed um, that perhaps it would be expedient to for the PRC to review um, draft changes that the superintendent would recommend in the rules, because I know sometimes when we're evaluating the policy, 
because mm -hmm. sometimes there's been discussion about putting things into the policy that are already covered in the rule, but um, the PRC didn't have the benefit of understanding the uh, the drafts that the superintendent had staff considering. So that's just one point for us to maybe um, consider for the next meeting. Um, and then the other thing that had been discussed, and I, I honestly forget who's I, who had brought this up, of getting public input sooner, um, having uh, perhaps our key stakeholders invited to a PRC meeting to give their input at an earlier juncture, junction. So those are just two points that I would um, put forward to evaluate um, in terms of maybe making the work uh, more efficient. Okay. Thank you. Are there any additional questions? Okay. So um, it does look like we need a um, vote on this. It looks like it's a discussion, and then you're going to bring us back the additional information that we requested at, um, I guess, at our next PRC meeting. Yes, ma'am. Great. So that brings me to recommendation 1.3. Uh, that the school system should create a user friendly subject index with word search capability for the manual and for the superintendent's rules. So we are reviewing those options with board docs and we will have a specific recommendation for you next month. There is currently a word search feature in board docs, but we want to make sure it's fully operational for um, our public and for obviously our employees. So there was a finding um, in chapter two that was a little bit uh, confusing to staff, and it indicated that the superintendent's rules were not posted in a section identified and codified for that purpose. That was at page 129. And again, just so the, the board is aware, the finding is, I mean, it's wrong. Uh, the superintendent's rules are posted in board docs. As indicated below, it's a drop down. And uh, Ms. Clark went to every other school system that uses board docs to see whether or not um, it was done differently anywhere else. It's not. We also consulted with board docs to see whether or not we could put the superintendent's rules on a second page and we're told we could not. But we wanted you to be aware that the finding um, is simply wrong. Uh, recommendation 1-4, uh, that we should create a policy provision listing existing procedural manuals uh, and then have hot links on our website. Uh, at this point, staff does not believe that a policy provision is necessary, but we will research and come back to you with how to make resources more accessible to members of the public. Also, as Ms. Causey pointed out with respect to board policy, uh, the current standard language in all board policies is that the superintendent will implement the policy. And you as members of the board have the, the perfect right to ask how those policies are being implemented. Um, there, there was a recommendation 1-7 that the board should adopt a civility policy based on um, chapter one's finding and specifically our staff response to that recommendation is that the board has included norms and operating protocols in your 2021 September 28th uh, board handbook. So if the board wishes to include anything more, specifically if the board wants to write a specific 8,000 series policy, and then if the board is satisfied that the handbook is your guide for civility and conduct. I would say yes to both because we have our civility code and I think that would be a good place um, to start to write our civility policy for the 8,000 series and uh, the handbook as our uh, guide for our civility and conduct. Any discussion or questions from anybody else on the committee in regards to that? Madam yes. Chair. So oh. oh, sorry. Go ahead. I Mr. cut somebody off. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Cosley and Ms. Scott. 
Uh, so, I guess the, my question would be, uh, or my comment, I guess, would be that I think that when we consider like creating a civility policy, we could employ the handbook as the board's guide for civility and conduct in that policy. Is that possible? Couldn't we just like put them both in one? So then uh, my question would be, why have a policy if it's in the handbook? Well, as I understand it, doesn't the po does the policy undergirds the handbook? The policy reinforces or, or or sets the tone for what's in the handbook. So I think it would be uh, good to have a um, civility policy that would mirror our civility code of conduct or our civility code. I don't I, I think we were talking about it in pre previous meetings about how like the board handbook does not have the policy does not have to supersede the handbook like the handbook could be weighted equivalent to the board policy and I kind of think that handbook should be weighted equivalently to the board policy in that way and that we maybe should we wouldn't have to adopt a separate policy um and so could we like put in policy somewhere that the board will adopt the handbook as its guide for civility and conduct instead of creating, instead of creating a, policy. a policy but instead of creating an entirely new policy couldn't we just add the handbook into another policy like add that yeah so i'm not sure miss howie you're the the expert on that but the recommendation was that we because of the findings and everything going on we need a very clear civility policy <laughs> and we could put in there that the handbook is the board's guide but I guess my only thing with this having a handbook without policy behind it, the handbook is just like a guideline. Policy is actually the policy that um, is, is is serves as the foundation. So I think that I think it would be a disservice to not have a policy and just have a handbook, or have that the handbook uh, is what guides the board. Uh, like in another policy somewhere. I, I just don't really under see how that would work. So if I'm hearing correctly, uh, what I'm hearing from Ms. Scott is that you would prefer something separate in the 8000 series that is specifically um, civility policy. <laughs> As was the recommendation. Um, and we also have the groundwork for it from our civility code that we all developed. So I think it would um, uh, be a good step forward based on the recommendation, but then also it's had the input from the full board. And then what I hear from Mr. Thomas is that there could be simply a reference in board policy um, to the fact that the board's conduct is guided by the handbook. So I'm hearing those two possibilities in terms of addressing recommendation 1-7. Is is that have I captured the the two recommendations accurately? I feel you have. Yes, I think right. so. Okay, so I would ask the committee this. Um, would the committee be interested in looking at policies that had been adopted by exemplar school systems and or in other state school districts concerning civility to determine whether or not what is in the handbook is reflected um, in other policies before deciding whether or not you want to go in this direction or that direction. I, for me, now because i've seen she there were examples that i that i've seen i think it would be good just to put together policy and then to bring that and have the committee review it and look at it and see if it's applicable to um to our needs so the committee wishes to see a full policy is that yeah. what the committee would like to see i don't want to um, yeah i think i, I mean I, I think there's is a little bit of like redundancy with like having the board handbook and the board operating principles and then a policy undergarding that. Uh, but I'm I, I'm I, I'm not opposed to the policy. So I think a policy, I mean, it would just provide another sense of reinforcement when it comes to board uh, conduct and obviously we need that reinforcement. So I understand what Ms. Scott is saying and and yeah, I, would, I guess seeing a policy would be appropriate. Yes, Mr. Causey. 
<clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for um, the presentation and for the discussion thus far. Um, I would like to see, um, I, I agree with Ms. Scott about a, a draft of a uh, specific policy based on uh, the exemplars that were provided um, by Public Works. Understood. Thank you. Any so, other? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, anything else about civility? My understanding is that staff will be returning uh, with a draft policy. So, with respect to uh, recommendation 111, uh, that the board should revise, revise and refine the superintendent's evaluation instrument. Um, the staff wanted the committee to be aware that board policy 8501, which is superintendent's evaluation, is scheduled for um, review this year. This is the implementation timeline that Public Works has recommended, um, specifically that the, the board chair would submit the performance review instrument in the first two months uh, that there would be um, uh, a chance for the board to review and revise that instrument and then the implementation to occur quarterly. So for discussion today, members of the committee or this evening, members of the committee, uh, do you wish to retain on your current schedule reviewing policy 8501 this year? Uh, do you want to discuss prior to your review of policy 8501, again, if you want to keep it on this year's schedule, which concepts you wish to be included in the revised policy? Um, and is this relevant to your review of Public Works recommended schedule of review? So that is, um, those are questions that staff has with respect to the uh, intersection, if you will, of mm -hmm. public works recommendation and the current policy review schedule. Okay, and I can just um, uh, ask the question. I see Ms. Kelsey, you also have another comment. Um, uh, I just want to understand how does our current schedule differ from the recommendation from public works schedule? You may have said that, but so I don't have in the front of my brain when 8501 is scheduled to be reviewed. Ms. Mm -hmm. um, Clark, which month is 8501 in the schedule for? Give me one second. Sure. Okay. Okay, while well, she gets that, Ms. Colsey, you had a comment? Yes, thank you. Um, so just stepping back to the display of board policies and superintendent rules within board docs, mm -hmm. I um, initially found it difficult to just understand to click down to the superintendent's rules. Mm -hmm. um, and if board docs does not have another current way, <clears throat> could that where it says board policies mm -hmm. um, include additional language? It says board policies and then period and then click arrow to access superintendent rules. So it's right there clear because I have heard from uh, constituents that it, you know, they can't find the rules. They can't find the rules. Sure. And we, know that, and we know that you have worked hard to put this, the policies and the rules there at the same time. So um, just an easier way for that to be a transparent uh, to the public. And then for new board members that come on, um, that it's very easy. Sure, we will look into that. We have included additional language on the landing page uh, about accessing uh, that drop down, but uh, everything can be approved upon. So we will look at whether or not board docs can add anything, but we specifically asked for a policy book and then another page that would be a rules book and we're told yet. Okay, and then to the um, current discussion of 8501, um, mm -hmm. I would like to see a draft that includes the public works recommendation schedule of review. So what I would, what staff would need then is input from the board as to exactly what you would want in the policy. Staff doesn't know what evaluative 
uh, issues you would like addressed in the policy. Mm -hmm. So that's oh. what we would need in order to write a policy um, that uh, incorporates public works recommendations. Is there a subcommittee? Is there a group of board members who are addressing these particular issues and they could communicate that with staff and uh, the, po the policy staff liaison and I will will talk. I'll talk to myself and we'll get that done. And so I guess my, my thing is, is that um, thank you for sorry. I didn't mean to cut in there because I want to just make sure I'm clear. <laughs> 8501 is currently scheduled for review at the PRC yes. meeting in December. Um, I, if it's that's December, what, if that's what Ms. Clark says, that's then she's Clark right. Just said. Okay. So what Ms. Causey is saying, it, 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 so that I can understand, is that she would like to see a list of the recommendations or, or a, a schedule of the recommendations from um, Public Works compared to what we're currently scheduled to do. Is that correct? Well, yes, and the current policy is very simple, so okay. it does not have a time frame at all. But we do have the work of the ad hoc um, committee yes. that has um, been working for um, almost three years. Um, and yeah. so um, I believe, Ms. Howie, you said that that may be a point for you to connect with the ad hoc committee and see what that process is and then in Incorporate the recommendations. Okay. So the recommendations that are here in public works um, in their timeline, uh, as I understand it, that's what you would like to be included in 8501. Well, we'd like to. Uh, it sounds like Ms. Cosby was saying we'd like to view it to see what what that would look like to have it included in there. Is that correct, Ms. Cosby? Sorry, I don't mean to put. Yeah. Yes, Madam yeah. Chair. Okay. Okay. Okay, and we can have the um, ad hoc committee um, chair follow up with you. All right, thank you. Yeah. So recommendation 1-12 about a self-assessment process for you as members of the board. Um, and the recommendation is to conduct, is to update your self-assessment instrument that would include specific metrics and that you would conduct this assessment annually. Um, the staff response is uh, in the same way that 8501 superintendent evaluation is scheduled for review. 8500 board self evaluation is scheduled for review this year. So this is the specific schedule implementation timeline that uh, Public Works has presented uh, as part of its report. And these are the questions that staff has uh, for you, members of the committee. First of all, whether or not you want to retain this current schedule for reviewing policy 8500. Um, do you wish to implement Public Works' recommendations or a little of this, a little of that? Do you want to implement the recommendations and revise policy 8501 with those uh, recommended uh, changes that um, public works is indicated. So the metrics, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> I was thinking it looks like, um, I guess we can get consensus. Um, uh, I'm also in favor of option three, um, where you were saying. Me too. Is that the committee's pleasure? Or is there something else that the committee would like staff to consider? Okay. Um, also, um, Ms. Causey asked a question. Is that is it in December as well? I believe it is. Is that correct, Ms. Clark? Yes, I had them both scheduled the same month. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm fine with option three. Um, yes, okay. Ms. Causey. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, verbalize my um, notes in the chat. Yes, I, I also agree that uh, option three, since the review of the policy is going to take place um, very quickly in December, um, so that we're meeting both the 
policy review, excuse me, the public works recommendation as a tier one uh, mm -hmm. recommendation to do that in this in a sooner time frame, as soon as is um, possible. And uh, I think that that's possible since staff had already had that. So mm -hmm. thank you. Understood. Thank you, members of the committee. It brings me to find to the finding on page 74 for setting board agendas um, and recommendation 1-13 uh, about making sure that the board uh, revises its agenda preparation. Um, we believe that policy 8314 is that response and that was obviously presented to you this evening. Mm -hmm. For next month, members of the committee, there are other recommendations in other chapters related to specific policies, HR, transportation, curriculum. We will be bringing to you next month uh, what those recommendations are and what we believe uh, we will do going forward. In addition, um, our next steps as uh, staff to the committee, uh, we want to find out and report to you which tools are available for indexing and making sure that the search function, that is uh, a useful search function for the policy manual. Um, as you've seen this evening, we want to include in future policy analyses any references to the public works report, um, which would include indexing suggestions. Um, and we uh, specifically would ask you and invite you to ask members of uh, your constituencies if there are particular search terms that they believe should be included so that we can include that in any index that's created. And then, as I indicated, we'll provide uh, responses to the remaining recommendations, those about specific policies uh, to you. We'll provide that next month. Great. And that is... That concludes. <laughs> that concludes. All right. Thank you so much for that. It was very, oh, very beautiful. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. And that's... <laughs> Thank you. It looks like there's a question from Ms. Causey. Thank you. I just wanted to um, understand if Ms. Howie's presentation is going to be attached to this meeting's board docs. Sure, we can do that, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And in my review of the um, board docs policies, there is a search box that says search active policies. Correct. And and then if you switch switch it to superintendent's rules, then you can. It looks like you can do that. Um, you can but. search board meetings, you can search reports. Um, it's it's I think a, a decent feature um, and I think it works very well. It does work well for us when we're researching other school systems in the state who use board docs. So maybe a, a tutorial a little mini uh, webinar. <laughs> we can see if there are any YouTube videos that Board Docs has, and we can perhaps link to that uh, so that individuals are aware of um, the ways in which they can search. I do think it's it's a pretty decent feature, actually. Yes, so, okay, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Thanks again for that update. So the floor is now open to members of the committee to discuss issues of concern. Um, I have to emphasize that this is not the time to conduct business as there has not been notice provided as required by the Open Meetings Act. So the floor is open. Are there any issues of concern? And I can go and see if anyone has any issues of concern or any questions. Yes, Ms. Oops, sorry. Yes, Ms. Causey or Mr. Thomas. I thought I saw Ms. Causey's name. Mr. Thomas can go ahead. Oh, OK. Yes, Mr. Thomas. Uh, so Mike, I just have a question uh, for like uh, administrative, I guess, 
procedures of the committee. Uh, if we have a policy that we'd like to bring forward for the committee to review um, that's not currently slated for the policy review cycle, uh, should we just submit an email to uh, Miss Scott, uh, Mr. Offerman, and you, Miss Howie, with the suggested policy and yes. uh, we added the agenda? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. That was my only question. Mm -hmm. Ms. Causey? Ms. Causey? Thank you. I'm trying to get my mouse to the right screen. Um, so uh, prior to the PRC meeting in September, um, we received an email from uh, Ms. Hen requesting that PRC add to a future agenda um, she had requested the next agenda mm -hmm. consideration of a new personnel policy specifically for compensation specific to salaries um, and apparently montgomery county public schools um, has example policies that were linked to this email mm -hmm. um, so i'm wondering is that something that miss scott you have um, for a future agenda item, or is that something where the committee would discuss now if we felt that that was something we want to add to the committee's work? So I do apologize, Ms. Causey. I did not respond directly to Ms. Hen. Uh, that was on my list of things to do. I've neglected to do so. That's my error. Uh, staff will be meeting to determine whether or not the, there was quite a, uh, a number of emails from employees, uh, I believe two or three that were attached to that email. And the suggestion was that a policy could address those employees' issues. So staff is scheduled to meet actually this week. Um, I'll be meeting with uh, members of the Office of Payroll to look at whether or not the fix is the policy. And I will be talking to Ms. Scott about uh, what staff's recommendation is, and then we'll provide a formal uh, response to Ms. Hen. But I had uh, I'd neglected to tell Ms. Hen that that was still in the works. It is, but the, the question is whether or not the policy actually fixes, if you will, the issue that is being addressed. Thank you for that. And um, Madam Chair, if I could just request from you that the response to Ms. Hent goes into the weekly update for the full board to understand, uh, because I know there are other board members that are um, concerned about this issue and Public Works has in their recommendations that we need to do things to improve morale. And, uh, you know, we are told specifically by our, um, you know, public comment and stakeholder comment that, you know, this is a very important issue for employee uh, morale and um, retention. So. So I'm sure um, because I don't have the email up in front of me, if it was included, um, if it included uh, Ms. Stifler and um, Dr. Williams on that, because I, I don't have it up in front of me. Then don't recall. It, I do not recall, okay. but I'm, yeah. I'm happy to forward it to uh, to Dr. Williams and to Ms. Stifler. Thank you. And, and then again, uh, the response can be um, included in board in um, our weekly updates. Surely. And I did want to address. I do apologize. I wanted to address Ms. Causey's comment in the chat about reviewing 8315. I misspoke about the February date. The policy was placed on the February agenda because of a state board of education appeal. After it was placed on the February agenda, the appellants sought review by, uh, in the circuit court. So it may be necessary to push back that policy um, a couple more months uh, pending a decision from the circuit court. But I'll let the, uh, the committee know. Great. Thank you for that clarification. Surely. Any so other questions or concerns? Yes. So, Madam Chair, to follow up with that, so is there any other mechanism by which uh, the board or the board officers um, or the board chair could sooner implement a virtual uh, option for our public? So the issue in 8315 83, was recognition, specifically that's what's being challenged, yeah was recognition of um, stakeholder groups. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's what's addressed in that policy. If uh, the board as an entity 
wants to have another process for uh, allowing members of the public to be heard, um, I'm happy to look at the policy to see whether or not there is that, uh, that possibility in the policy. So if you review one part and not another, however, that will mean that you're gonna be coming back to it. And quite frankly, uh, if you're going to go back to it, why would you do it and have to do the work twice? But I leave that to the board as to what your request is. Hmm. Okay. Um, it sounds like 8315 is currently, like you said, um, being reviewed in court. So um, until that comes back, it, it, it sounds like there's public comment, which is one part, but also another part of it is um, the stakeholder portion, which is what not what we're discussing. It sounds like what we're discussing is technically um, if there can be a virtual option for people to call in. And that's just. Um, and Ms. Causey is asking counsel. about um, a resolution. Um, I'm guessing in the same way that the board created a resolution uh, on its virtual meetings uh, as a result of COVID. So uh, if the, the committee wishes me to discuss that issue with board council, I can do that. Okay. Um, and what would that result like if you discuss it with board council, he would let us know or you all would discuss and let us know yes, the um, likelihood. Okay, great. Yes, Ms. Causey, you have a follow-up question? Yes, I just appreciate that because um, as it was discussed in the board meeting, um, several of us that attended MABE were hearing about this um, as a really beneficial thing to the public during, not only during the, the COVID issues where people may uh, have reasons to stay home, but would still want to contribute, um, but also in terms of equity. So it, um, my understanding is um, that's going to be addressed in the equity committee. And so maybe with this new infer, um, discussion point with the board council, that that could help move that along. So I appreciate that uh, suggestion. Sure. All right. Any other discussion? All right. Thank you, everyone. So the next meeting of the Policy Review Committee is scheduled for November 15th. 2021 at 4 30 p.m. and because there is no further business the meeting is now adjourned thank you have a good evening thank you committee members thank Bye. you everyone <laughs>